What organisation was founded by the Reverend John Flynn? And you seem like you're fairly confident. Yes. Why stop now? <laughs> Tonight, Barbara's back. And in the season finale of Fifth Grader, Bondi vet Dr Chris Brown comes to class with a gift. You can see he's got an L plate on, right? Yeah. They decided that a P plate was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but will his qualifications see him through? Dr think, Chris I Brown, because I'm a, vet, a question vet, on animals, I, I and we're going to have to check. I know. Fantastic! That's tonight on Fifth Grader. And nothing <laughs> wrong with not being smarter than a fifth grader, but let's see if our adults can prove that they are. If they can, they could walk away with half a million dollars! <laughs> of other people's money. I would love to introduce you to my class. Thank you for asking. Here's Maddie! <laughs> Lovely grandmother and she loves her leopards. Here's how she's doing. Last week, Barbara made a good start, answering the first three questions on her own. That would be he. You are correct! <laughs> but by the end of question seven, she'd used her peak, copy and save, winning $30,000. She's only got three subjects left on the board, but with all her cheats gone, she's now on her own. That's exciting. Let's pick a new subject, Barb. What are you thinking? I know what you don't like. Fifth grade Australian history? OK, here we go. For $50,000, Fifth Grade Australian History. What organisation was founded by the Reverend John Flynn? I know that one. That's you know this one? I, yes, I Do you really? Yes, yes. What is it? The Royal Flying Doctor Service. Well, I guess, look, you may as well have a guess, cos even if you're wrong, you're still on $30,000 anyway, so there's no point in dropping it. And you seem like you're fairly confident. Yes. Why stop now? <laughs> <laughs> what organisation was founded by the Reverend John Flynn? The Royal Flying Doctor Service. Your classmates had the right answer. Royal Flying Doctor Service, correct! You are right, you are right, you are right! You are about to play for $100,000. Two subjects left. You've left these till the end. I'm very fascinated as to why. Well, you see, they don't read Enid Blyton anymore. What um, are you picking? There's one of two options. We have to pick something. We'll do the media. OK, <laughs> let's go media. I know! Now, why have you been staying away from this? I'm fascinated as to why. Cos I'm really scared it's going to be some... But are you like music? I mean, you're, you're good mates with Farnsey. <laughs> yes! Well, you bumped into him once. <laughs> That was outside Buckingham Palace at the changing of the guard. Right. I said, oh, Tony, look, that's John Farnham. So Tony yelled out and he came over and we had our photo taken. Don't you love the glasses? You can tell it was in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and I have loved him since I was 16 years of age. Oh, well, there we go. Well, who knows? We could have a question on Farnsey. Oh, I will. Let's have a look. What is the name given to the pictorial representation of a movie script? OK, nothing up your alley. <laughs> what is the name given to the pictorial representation of a movie script? We've got 50 grand now in your leopard skin purse, I'm sure. What is the name given to the pictorial... Pictorial representation of a so... movie script. Maybe this was a good one to dodge after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, mm. So you got $50,000. Yes. By all means, drop out of school and take that 50 grand home. Representation of a movie script. If you have a guess at this, I know. With nothing left to save you, it's the risk between winning 50 to get to 100, or you're dropping down 20 to $30,000. If it's pictorial, it's the pictures and it's the animation. What else would it be? A movie script. Yes, I think it's the animation. Animation! <laughs> What is the name given to the pictorial representation of a movie script? Animation. Is incorrect, Barb. I'm so sorry. 
Your classmates had the correct answer. It's storyboard. The storyboard. When they take the script and they put it into little drawings so there that the go. director knows what Must. shots are going to be what. But you still have $30,000. So that's not all bad. Not all bad. Would you please, Bob? is Barbara Hymas and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Alrighty, guys, would you like to meet a new classmate? Yeah! Alright, from a very tender age he felt at home among the animal kingdom and although he tried various other activities, he found he preferred to talk with the animals. He's played with possums, cavorted with cattle and even lazed around with lions. Let's go wild for Bondi vet Dr Chris Brown. <laughs> Who's this little fella? This is Connell. Connell hey, with a K. Connell. Connell with a K. It's the first spelling channel. channel so we've all learned yeah. something. Exactly. Uh, who's he from? Where are you from, little one? You're, he's a, he's you're a falling bit. asleep already. I know. It's, it's... Welcome to our show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, this is you in primary school. You look yeah. like you're a giant. I was. I was always <laughs> tall. Were you 20 when you were in grade 5? You look like a bit of a man-child there, don't I? You but, do. But, but... Name one kid at that age who can actually tie their own tie. That exactly. tie's got mum written all over <laughs> it. It looks doesn't like it? it should have elastic <laughs> around <laughs> it. All right, Chris, well, while we've got our kids over there, we should get one of them over here and get our game started. <laughs> I'm going to say, I, I, heard, I heard Oliver singing in, in makeup before. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want to get him right out from the start. Come on, Ol, out you come. I like, a, I like a guy too that shakes a dog's hand and then smells his own hand. <laughs> is it all right? No. Is it all clear? No. Now we should point out why you have your little puppy pal here. So Connell is an assistance dog. So basically everyone's seen guide dogs that help out people yeah. that are blind. Assistance dogs help out people with physical disabilities, so people that are confined to wheelchairs. Oh, so, so is he one of those ones that sort of helps answer phones and Exactly, like yes. Yeah. So right. if, if they drop something, they don't need a carer around 24 hours a day to pick it up. A dog once, you know, like Connell, once he's grown up, can actually pick it up. Fetch! <laughs> He's still got a way to go. It's, <laughs> it's very early days. So yeah. they're your charity tonight? That's Absolutely. who you'll be playing for? <laughs> yeah, you bet. Well, let's have a look. We've got our subjects up on the board. If you get one question correct, you'll get $500 for, for your charity. If you get all ten correct, $250,000. That's not bad. That'd be great. I, I should say, too, that, that uh, it costs about $25,000 to, to train an assistance dog for someone, so that money's going to be fantastic. That'd be great. Mm. If we get $250,000, 10 dogs, that'd ten be dogs, great. That'd help comments. a lot of people. And, well, even better still, if you do get all 10 correct, Dr Chris, I'll give you a shot at one extra primary school question. That one, however, will be worth half a million dollars. That's good puppy love. That's good puppy love. Now, shall we send Connell with a K off somewhere I think, else? I think it's bedtime. Who would like to take Connell home? <laughs> Do you actually know that guy? I do actually. He, he's actually the boss of Assistant Dogs Australia. He's the top dog. I hope so. Otherwise, stop me, is what I was thinking. Now, Chris, I should obviously let you know that uh, during the course of the game, I'll let you drop out with whatever money you have up until that point. But you have to promise me you will look down the barrel of the camera and tell me, with your arms crossed, looking as very chesty bonds as you can. It's not hard, really. I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. Will you do that for me, Chris? I can, in a white singlet, too. If oh, very nice. I'm sure everyone will be happy with that. <laughs> All right, let's find out. Is Dr. Chris Brown smarter than a fifth grader? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got some nice subjects on the board for you, I think, tonight here, Chris. Uh, what do you like, Ong? Grandma, 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 goals to get things started. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade maths. How many minutes are there in three and three quarter hours? How many minutes are there in three and three quarter hours? That's charged by the hour. This should be pretty easy for you. It's a lot of money right there. It is already. <laughs> now Oliver's writing down an answer. While he does that I'll tell you how your classmates help you increase. You've got a peak, you've got a copy and if you get it wrong but they get it right they save you. It's as simple as that. Right. How many minutes are there in three and three quarter hours? Do you think you know this one? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I mean, it's 45 minutes in three quarters of an hour. So you've got to add 45 to how many minutes there are in three hours. 60 minutes in an hour, three times 60, 180 plus 45, 225. Right, I shouldn't really set that because I've really put all the rock here. Well, he's locked in an answer. 180 plus 45 is 225. Yes. Locked that in. First question up, 500 bucks. You are correct, 225. Well done. Where away. Where away. We'll be playing for $1,000 when we return. I know you're smarter than a fifth grader. Let's, let's get... Music, music, music. I'm a vet, I've got no rhythm. <laughs> Chris Brown might be my name, but there's no rapping. So <laughs> right. Actually, incidentally, what was the name of your childhood sweetheart at school? Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> what? I never made that connection. What? <laughs> that is... Please tell me it ended better than than the modern-day version of. From memory, there was a, a schoolyard brawl and <laughs> I was kicked out of school and... So now, we, we, you actually were going out for a while? Or it was... What oh, happened? We dated for six months. I, I asked her out, so romantic, by uh, writing her a note. Rather than nodding, she actually wrote a note back that said yes. The rules are pretty simple in the relationship. There was to be no talking, there was to be no contact, there was not even to be eye contact. Much like Chris's it's restraining. Yeah, 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 very right. similar. So, and I thought, look, after six months, it's time to step it up a little bit and talk to her. <laughs> wow. So I went, up to her, I went up to her in the playground and said, Hot. hi, Rihanna, how are you going? I was dumped ten minutes later You're by kidding. note. Yeah. By note? Pushing it too fast, apparently. Oh, ponder replay. By oh. talking. I don't even know. For talking. That's what happens. Right. See? It's no talking. Title. No talking in school. Let's pick a new subject then, Chris. Are you going to go with music or anything else, perhaps? I'm going animals. Fifth grade animals. Oh, of course up. you are. Obviously, you're a vet. Mm -hmm. Your dad was a vet as well. I know. My uh, my auntie is a vet as well. Ooh, all so right. I could really let the whole family down <laughs> no right pressure. now. What word starting with W can be used to describe a young seal? What word starting with W can be used to describe a young seal? I'm thinking... This is, this is the situation I was actually afraid of, right? But See, so... now, because I, I think I know an answer to this, but it doesn't start with W. Hmm. What See, word starting with W can be used to describe always, a young seal? I always thought... A young seal was a pup. Well, that's what I was thinking. But that doesn't start with W. Now I'm confused. Hmm. Wheelie, wheelie small, I guess, is, <laughs> is, one, is one option. What we're saying with W can be used to describe a young seal. Are you thinking you might have to cheat at this point? Well, I, th I think... Dr Chris I Brown, think because I'm a, vet a question vet, on animals, I th I think and we're going to have to cheat. I know. I know how I write. Fantastic! But I think because I'm a vet, they've gone, right, let's step it up a little bit. Yeah, and, and, let's confuse and good him. on them, too. Yeah, I'd do exactly he's the same thing. Because some stuff. We need to bring him down a peg or two. Yeah. Well, I've got a medical degree. I can do stuff mm. with animals, and I'm gorgeous. Mm. Well, yeah, answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. So I am going. I'm get based on Oliver's quick answer. I'm going to have a little bit of a peek. You're just going to peek. Okay. Look. Peek. All right. Let it peek. I'm surprised you can't from that height already. <laughs> Welp. Welp. Have you heard of a whelp? Whelping is what dogs do when they give birth. Ah. Oh. So. Mm. It was fast, though, wasn't it? It was fast. It was very fast. So you think you'll lock in whelp? Well. I still want to lock in pup. <laughs> it doesn't start with does it? OK, let's go with whelp. Lock that in. What well, we're saying with W can be used to describe a young seal. You said pup, obviously. Mm. That's one. That can also be used to describe a young dog. Mm. As can the word whelp. Used to describe a young seal. Whelp is the correct answer. Um, Maddie, I'm going to go with Maddie. Maddie! <laughs> I know. Happy music on. Happy music on. <laughs> Welcome, Maddie. See, I didn't think you'd be like that, with, so friendly with a dog. Oh, uh, I, I love little puppies. I don't care what breed they are. I don't care if they're pugs dribbling. I love puppies. Oh, Maddie. everything's cute when it's small. Phew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what subjects do you like on the board tonight, uh, Maddie? Yeah. 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 Y
Australian history. I like. Not much else. I was gonna say spelling, but yeah, spelling. I like spelling. I like music. Okay. I reckon spelling. What do you reckon, Maddie? Yeah. I can do that. Let's go with spelling. Okay, let's go spelling. Here we go. Spell the following word. It won't come up there. We're not that, we're not that friendly. I was waiting for it to come up too. Spell the following word. Necessary. Necessary. Yep. N E C E double S A R Y. N E C E double S A R Y. Happy to lock that in. Matt is still writing down an answer. But you seem fairly confident with that one. I think after my last effort, a quick answer was necessary, Rav. Oh. Even uh, put it into a sentence. Uh, I know. Um, yes, I'm going to lock that in. here playing for Assistance Dogs Australia and currently sitting on $3,000. Hopefully we're going to make it $5,000. Let's pick a new subject. Music! Grandma! Grandma! Maddie, what do, you, what do you like with science? Uh, yeah, I'm good with science. Let's, let's go third grade science, right? Science, OK. Well, again, obviously, you... You've got honours in, in vet science? Oh, no, no, right, but we did this before. We built ourselves up and we had a fall. So I let's know. Just, never seen you science before. That, never me. seen science before in my life. <laughs> Salinity is a measure of what substance in soil? Salinity is a measure of what substance in soil? It means you're going mental, doesn't it? <laughs> Maddie's locked in an answer. Salinity I up, is a I, measure I of what I spent substance. part of my childhood growing up on a farm. And on that farm... E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> exactly. And, and no McDonald's in the, in the family. <laughs> but, um, but we used to see farms that had really bad salinity. And they had these white patches around them because the salinity come up through the ground and the white patches were salt. Ha ha ha. Uh-huh. So what are you thinking? I'm going to say salt. Soil. That's what it's a measure of. You can lock it in. <laughs> salinity is a measure of what substance in soil? Salt is correct. Now we go. Thank you, Maddie. We say it well. Thanks, Maddie. Chris, right. good job. Let's double it to ten thousand dollars. Pick a new classmate. Me, 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 You can, see, you can see he's got an L plate on, Rav. Yeah. They decided that a P plate was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Dylan, you can, you can get all the pats you like if we get through these next two. Oh, well, okay. what do you like? What do you like that's still up there, Dylan? Um, I like sports. Mm -hmm. Man, good man. Maybe music. Do you want to go to sport? Yeah, okay, let's oh. do sport. All right. <laughs> all right, fifth grade sport for hopefully $10,000. Name three of the non-race events in the women's heptathlon. As familiar as I am with the women's heptathlon. Wow! Yeah. Name three of the non-race events in the women's heptathlon. So it's very complicated. They'd be the ones not on the track, wouldn't they? In the grassy bit around the, in the middle or... I don't know, I don't know. Perhaps in the sandy bit around the outside. Oh, are you thinking you know something? Perhaps. 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 Well, okay. I'm, I'm willing to, to explore some options here. I reckon one of them is going to be high jump. Uh-huh. I reckon one of them is going to be long jump. Actually, maybe not high jump. Then I'm sort of playing this little game with myself about um, whether it's javelin or shot put. So you've actually got four. I've got four, but I, I don't know if they're all in there. Well, I need you to name three. Yeah. So you can't, I mean, 
If you've got four in your head, you'll still have to pick three of them to tell me and hope that they're the right ones. Otherwise, you can just pick 18 sports, give them all to me, and we know the three of them are in there probably somewhere. I'm just having trouble working out whether a hept heptathlon's five. I know it's, the decathlon's ten, pentathlon's five, so maybe heptathlon's seven. I do have a save though, don't I? You do have a save. You do have a save. If Dylan is right. And that's if you are wrong. Mm. Bearing in mind I've got my save, I'm going to say long jump, high jump, and javelin. You're going to lock those three in? Long jump's in there. Don't like the look on your face, bro. Really concerns me. High right jump now. is in there. Shot put is in there. It was the one I was thinking about, wasn't it? So too is Javelin. You are correct, Chris. Oh, yes. yes. Well done. $10,000 okay. for Assistance Dogs Australia. We can now double that with one correct answer. Let's pick a new subject. Easy. Easy. Liam's saying a lot about grammar, but as my mum Ann Brown would know, grammar is not my strong point. So I'm going to... Fair and I appreciate the input, Liam, but we're going to pull back right now. OK. Sorry. I'm going to go with third grade Australian history. Third grade Australian history! Let's do this thing. Who was the first reigning British monarch to visit Australia? Who was the first reigning British monarch to visit Australia? Hmm. Glad I did that. Mm -mm. Dylan's locked something in. Got to be honest, I'm not, I'm not much of a, of a monarchist, so a knowledge of Liz and a family probably isn't my strong point. I remember when I was about about your age, actually, kids. I went Queen Elizabeth II visited Newcastle. It was a big moment, and uh, I went down there. But I, I don't think she would have been the first. So who she's, do you think it was? She's been around for a while, and it was difficult to get here before that. It's like when the landlord comes over. Yeah. You know, you've got a rental property and the yeah. landlord comes over. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was like that, everyone going, tidy up quickly! It's sort of hard to hard for 10 million people to, to hide the pets though, isn't it? Oh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think who was before Elizabeth. Was it George? My cat's name's George. It doesn't really help. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a cat called Tinkerbell, I don't think that helps either. <laughs> Not at all. Um, OK, I'm going to copy. Knocking in copy? <laughs> now, what were you thinking, though? Well, I think someone would have been here before Queen Elizabeth II. It was probably her father, who I think... It was either an Edward or a George. They're not too imaginative when it comes to their names, so... Doesn't matter, because you're wrong. Sweet. It was Queen Elizabeth II. Okay. Do you know when you went and saw her? It was that probably was the first time. That's it was the why first everyone was time. celebrating. And you always remember your first, no, apparently, yeah, but no, not in your case. The first reigning British monarch to visit Australia, Queen Elizabeth II. So now you're going to copy Dylan's answer. So we're hoping that's what Dylan has. If he does, you got $20,000 mm -hmm. for Assistant Dogs Australia. Yep. If he doesn't, we say goodbye and you have nothing, unfortunately. Here is Dylan's answer. Queen Elizabeth II! <laughs> $20,000 for Assistance Dogs Australia. We're about to play for the all-important safe level, $30,000. <laughs> a nice place to be. We still have a save, so pick a new class, mate. <laughs> Liam, you are up, my friend. Yeah. Let's go. How are you going, Liam? Good. Do you have pets at home? Um, yeah, I've got a dog, a cat and two goldfish. How do they all get along? Um, my cat doesn't really like my dog all that much and my dog doesn't really like my cat all that much. Oh dear, yeah. it's a bit awkward. I've you got need... like a list, like a foot long dog of pets I want to have when I'm older though. Oh, what would you like to have when you're older? A pug dog named Ralph, a parrot named Franklin, a monkey called Bob, a duck called Howard. <laughs> it, it's really quite Now, large. the interesting one's the monkey. 
Can you have monkeys in Australia? You, you need a licence, it's very difficult. He doesn't yeah. know what he's talking about. You get me through this, I'll waive that little licence. Don't you worry about that. Bob, you're okay. Let's win you a monkey! <laughs> what do you like, Liam? Um, I really like Music. Art. Art. Music. Art, let's go art. Music. Art, come on, get it, come on. Art, music, I want a monkey. I want to win a monkey. Can I have a come yeah. monkey too? You give me those cards and we'll have a, we'll have five monkeys here before you know. Hey, but it's just your background information. Look, that's where your parents are from. That's, that's There's no answers there. That's the charity you're playing oh, for. Oh, very good. Now you're going to give me a monkey, idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Suck up! Anything else you like, Liam? Um, arts, music and grammar are my three main ones. Let's go grammar. Let's go grammar. Second yep. grade, $20,000 and monkeys! Can I say straight up, Mum, I apologise for what's about to happen. <laughs> what is the verb in this sentence? People flock to the beach in summer. What is the verb in this sentence? People flock to the beach in summer. It's the word that's doing stuff. You know, people, they're just people. The beach, it's there. Summer, it's what it is. <laughs> it's what it is. But flocking, that's an action, you know? That's what's going on. That's what's going down what's here. Going down, yeah? The verb in this sentence, people flock to the beach in summer, what are you thinking? I think it's flock. Whoa, sorry, what? I, you, you heard, yeah. Oh, my back was turned. That's what I'll say when it's wrong, but I think it, <laughs> I think, I think it is flock. You're going to flock it in? <laughs> um, flock. People flock to the beach in summer, you are right. Just because Australia now have thirty thousand dollars in their pocket, no matter what, that's great. Look how excited the dog is. Easy boo, easy boo, little puppy. You got some money, Bobby. You got some money, Bobby. You got some money. You got some money. Hang on to that for me. Rove, he, he's good dog. actually good dog. <laughs> oh, and of course I forgot to point out, not only thirty thousand dollars safe level, we just got a monkey. Woo! Fourth grade Royal History, fourth grade arts, first grade music for your $50,000 question. Yeah, you've been really hassling me for music the whole time. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna wilt. I'm gonna wilt because Rihanna would want that. First grade music. <laughs> <laughs> it's always bound to the whims of an ex. Beginning with C is what word for a person who writes music? Beginning with C is what word for a person who writes music? Liam's locked in an answer. There's an answer that came straight to my head, and I, I can't see how it could be wrong, but I'm sure... What answer was that? It was composer. Because you compose music and, and, you know, it's not just a uh, sort of emotional thing. You've got to write it down at some stage. So I'm going to say composer, I'm going to lock it in with confidence, Rose. Bang. Did you really see what word for a person who writes music? You weren't thinking conductor, were you? Well, they just had that chopstick. It is a chopstick, too. It's nothing more than that. <laughs> and just do that. Beginning with C is what word for a person who writes music? Composer. He's correct, Dr. Tonight's Sultana brand home viewer question. A healthy balanced diet means eating A, foods rich in saturated fat, B, foods from each of the five different food groups, C, cakes, chips and lollies. For your chance to win a Lenovo netbook, SMS A, B or C and your full name and address to 19774444 or enter online at 10.com.au forward slash fifth grader. The answer to tonight's Sultana brand home viewer question is B. Foods from each of the five different food groups. Assistance Dogs Australia are very pleased that Dr Chris Brown so far has proved he is smarter than a fifth grader. They had $50,000 thanks to you. That's two dogs. That is two dogs. But We're yeah. about to double that. <laughs> To $100,000, we have one classmate left. Come on down, Louis. <laughs> Hello, Lily. Hello. Did you see the little puppy? It was so cute. Do you have any pets? I have two fish. What are they called? Wallace and Gromit. Are they really? <laughs> are they goldfish? Yes, just goldfish. I've got two. My, my two goldfish, John and Barry, they could, like, hang out. Mm. They could go on a date or something. They're... Oh, I... 
Wallace and Gromit are boys and so are John and Barry. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're if you're watching right now and you are a fish and you are that way inclined, I applaud you <laughs> and say... Yes. <laughs> Although it's hard for the fish to wear the little ribbons, just stabs, it's just not good. It's not good. Okay, we have two subjects left. I'm going to push for world history and then we're going to work our way to art. Is that okay? Well, you still have a helping hand? Exactly. Not a bad idea. $50,000, hopefully doubling it to $100,000. This would be a nice... We could put them all at the bottom of the puppy litter and just let them roll around in it. <laughs> Which age came between the Stone Age and the Iron Age? Which age came between the Stone Age and the Iron Age? Hmm. You know your ages. I know a few ages, yeah. I think you had an Ice Age, you had a Stone Age, you had an Iron Age, and you had a Bronze Age in there as well, just somewhere in the middle. But was it between those two? I reckon iron came after bronze because... Oh, it all did it. Jeez. So I reckon the Ice Age came before the Stone Age. And the Flintstones weren't preparing themselves for a winter either. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. They never wore shoes? They never did. They must have known the cold had come before. So I'm going to say the Stone Age came after the Ice Age. And there was a Bronze Age in between the Stone and the Iron Age. I'm going to lock in bronze and I'm going to hope like hell that if I'm wrong, Lily has the right answer and saves my little... Yep. <laughs> you can lock in bronze? He's locking in bronze! <laughs> the age that came between the Stone Age and the Iron Age, Chris... Ice Age... ..is incorrect. You are right, Bronze oh, Age! Yeah. For two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, quarter of a million dollars, ten dogs. That's a lot of dogs. Ten dogs. We have Lily here, and your save. One subject remains. Let's knock it over. Fourth grade arts for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. An 1890 painting by Tom Roberts was called Shearing the What? An 1890 painting by Tom Roberts was called Shearing the What? Don't you lock something in so quickly. That's just... Come on. Whoa. 1890 painting by Tom Roberts, Shearing the What? Probably afford that painting if I got this question right. Yes, you could. Let the dogs take care of themselves and just get a nice piece of artwork for the foyer of the <laughs> office. <laughs> At Assistance Dogs Australia. Do you have any dogs? No, but we have some nice painting. Yeah. Sheep is too obvious, isn't it? Yeah. It's, I'm not familiar with your Tom Roberts. I, I know he's, he's sort of, he was very Australian. He was very Australian landscapey from, from memory. <laughs> That's an official art term too. I, I do remember the landscapey period. <laughs> it followed the, uh, the Iron Age actually. I it think did, you did. Find. <laughs> what are you thinking? I'm just thinking that I'm not too sure and I'm thinking that in no disrespect to Lily whatsoever, if she is an expert on the 1890 art collection of the Australian Art Gallery, then Lily, play some sport. <laughs> get, get out and, you know, just, I don't even care if you play a bit of Nintendo, but just broaden, broaden the horizons just a little bit. Now, Chris, I'm looking up at your classmates up here mm. and I'm seeing the same answer. Someone else has got an answer out here too, which is <laughs> the slightly dog, distracting. The puppy is attacking one of our staff. <laughs> Chris, Chris, don't, don't give up on me. Look, I still, I still need to be trained. <laughs> I still need to be trained. <laughs> Do you know the answer? Do you know the answer? Oh, really? Is that a fact? <laughs> Sit here and gnaw on my finger, that's fine. <laughs> What are you thinking? Chris, do you want to lock in an answer? No, something just came into my brain. <laughs> What's that? Well, and it's not sheep. It's not sheep now? No. Good Lord, what are we possibly shearing? Well, I just... I started to think about other names for sheep. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, fetch. 
Sit. Good. Sit. Scratch yourself. Good job. Walk over there. He's obedient. Walk. Walk. Oh, yeah. Aww. Sure, but when I stumble around the set, oh, he's drunk. <laughs> when the dog does it, how cute. You have a new answer. Yeah. Something's popped into your head. Mob. Shearing the sheep sounds like, no offence, like a paint, a name of painting that you do when you're young. You write, it's called shearing the sheep. But for Tom Roberts to paint a painting that he wants to be known it for for years and years and years, he wants to be a little bit original. <laughs> and I think I've heard of a painting called Shearing the Mob, and this is going to really... OK, so... It hurt me now. Now you've got two answers, possibly, mm. but you've leant towards another. Mm. So you want to lock that in now? I just want to say, Assistant Talks Australia, I'm very sorry. I'm going to lock in an answer. What are you going to lock in? Mob. And what was the other one you said? Sheep. Which seems fairly obvious, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Shearing the sheep mm. is incorrect. Shearing the mob. Mm. That's also incorrect. Ah, oh, jeez. It's rams. Shearing the rams. Does that ring a bell now? No. It's still fairly obvious, isn't it? It is. All right. Oh, Lily. So now we're hoping Lily has the right answer. If she does, and I'm so sorry to put this pressure on you, Lily, then Assistance Dogs Australia has $250,000. You said that could help 10 dogs. Mm. Help train 10 dogs. Mm -hmm. If not, still $30,000 is a good amount of money. Let's make that very clear. Yep. The 1819 painting by Tom Roberts, shearing the... Here is Lily's answer, Chris. She got it right! $50,000, a quarter of a million dollars, Chris. Mm. Would you like to double that to half a million dollars? <laughs> we'll do it after this. I know you're smarter than a fifth grader. What? is from Assistance Dogs Australia and Dr Chris Brown is playing for them and has currently won them $250,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, now, you were saying to me before that these guys, uh, they're not government funded, they only rely on donations, is that correct? They do and they actually don't get too many of them because everyone thinks of guide dogs but forgets about the assistance dogs which do just as good a work. So this is huge for them because it costs about $25,000 just to train one dog for one person. So and I was I was told that the most they have ever received from a one-off donation was about a hundred thousand mm. dollars. So you could hopefully deposit two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into their coffers, which I think would be great. That'd be all right. Or how about this half a million dollars? <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Let me explain it to you how it works. Mm -hmm. You get the subject alone, Chris. Off that, you have to lock in whether you are playing or whether you are dropping out with $250,000. If you decide to play from then on in, it's all or nothing. $500,000 or $30,000, depending on whether you are right or wrong, on the subject alone, the subject alone. Got all that? I got it. Your half a million dollar subject, Dr. Chris, is Australian geography. Oh, don't. Australian geography. Don't tempt me with Australian geography. Is that tempting? Well, I did three unit geography for the HSC. Wow. Yeah. Now, we had our $250,000 question. That was seemingly pretty easy. Mm hmm And you had two answers and both of them were wrong. And we had to have Lily to save you. Which she did well. Which she did well. Hmm. See, what I'd love is, you know, a question on how many 
states there are in Australia, but I'm not sure that the good people at Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader are going to throw that little one just out. Do you know why? Because they're not good people. <laughs> they are not. All right. Australian geography, are you going to take that for half a million dollars or are you going to drop out with $250,000, which, as you said, can train ten dogs? Should I be feeling a warm feeling dribbling down my sleeve? Is that... That's, that's, that's normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking, when, you know, do assistance dogs have the facilities to train 20 dogs? <laughs> just trying to shift it here. Well, at the moment, you have for them, as I just said, the single largest donation they will have ever received. $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars. But it's a lot. If you are wrong, if you are wrong, $30,000 only. It's a lot riding on this one. Yeah, there is. And I'm glad that um, Connell's feeling the pressure too. I was going to say, is the tension ruined by the fact I'm holding a puppy? I'm who, trying who, to be tense. Who is Everything is serious. <laughs> and every time I say serious, everyone goes, mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I look when I sleep. <laughs> Australian geography, half a million dollars. Are you in or are you out on $250,000? I think after what I did to the organisation on the last question, I couldn't do it to them again. I couldn't risk it again. Even though if I could have picked one topic, it probably would have been this one. Um, I'm going to say no, Rogue. I'm going to pass. So You're I'm going to drop pass. out? Yep. You're going to lock that in? See what your question would have been. Mawson Peak, one of the last active volcanoes on Australian territory, is on which island? You know when I said I think I'm okay at Australian geography. Volcanoes, you know, didn't, wasn't really included in that <laughs> description. Um, more, I mean, with Mawson there, you'd think Antarctica, and I know there are no active volcanoes on Australia. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the Australian territories. We own a fair portion of Antarctica, thanks to Mawson. I'm going to really just make a, a strong lunge for this one and say Antarctica. Antarctica? You would have given these guys only $30,000. Yeah. You would have been wrong, Chris. <laughs> I think your class actually had the right answer. Really? Have a look. Heard Island. Who are you guys? Heard Island is the answer we were looking for. Chris, you Amazing. played very well and very wisely for Assistance Dogs Australia, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's done it. Thank you, kids. I hate to do it to you because you made it right. To the finish line, pretty much, but you did drop out with one question to go, and really, it's a moot point. But if you would, please. My name is Dr. Chris Brown. That's right. <laughs> and I mm. am not smarter than a fifth grader. Oh, <laughs> but it's cute, and there's a puppy. Great job, though. $250,000. That's a good Thank Brown. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. The nice Chris Brown. This season, Maddie, Dylan. Liam, Oliver and Lily have helped their classmates take home over half a million dollars and our celebrities to win almost one million dollars for charity. So now it's time to say farewell to this year's fifth grade class. That does bring us to the end of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader for 2009. As always, it's time to now graduate our class of fifth graders. Guys, thank you so much for what you've thank done. You. Especially for all the stupid people that you helped. <laughs> I thank you and the networks thanks you because you've won a lot of people a lot of money. So thank you very much. Round of applause for that at the very least. Because of that, on behalf of Network 10, we'd like to say thank you to each of you by depositing in your accounts for when you reach high school, a bit of scholarship money, $10,000 to each of you to say thank you very much. Or just spend it on mixed lollies. I don't care. I don't care. It's not my cash. But one last time, thank you very much to Liam, Manny, Dylan, Lily, 
Chocolate 2009 officially graduated. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Rod McManus. For the last time this series, say hi to your mum for me. Class dismissed!